has been a film editor for over 40 years. He has worked on Taxi Driver, Heaven's Gate, Black Rain, Jacob's Ladder, and Heat. He won an Oscar as part of the editing crew for The Right Stuff. This documentary is about his first major Hollywood film. It featured the biggest name in show business. The company that, was, uh, that I was working for as an editor on a series called The Big Valley. And they, in the summer, in the summer hiatus, when we shut down, uh, had the script that they wanted to make uh, a feature with. And somehow they made the deal with the, with the Colonel and with Elvis and uh, to make clam bake. What's the matter? You just said the magic word. Clam bake? Yeah. And a former film editor, a guy by the name of Arthur Nadell, was uh, contracted to, to direct it and uh, he approved me as the, the, the film editor. While Clam Bake takes place in Miami, Florida, Elvis never left Hollywood. Nadell and his crew used stunt doubles, body doubles, rear projection, B-roll footage of actual speedboat races to fool the audience into thinking Elvis was really there. It was done you know, in, the, in the method that, that we used at the time. You know, it was a uh, rather privileged. But you're going to wipe out for sure that time. Now, how, how was it working? Uh, cutting around, having to have all these body doubles and then the Elvis close-ups and stuff. Was that creating strange rhythms for you? Or? Yeah, <laughs> to say the least, yeah. Uh, but you, you, did what you, you, you could only do with what, you know, what, what you had to work with. Elvis was very cooperative, but he didn't want to work in long hours, so you didn't spend, you know, didn't have a lot of takes, a lot of coverage. Uh, but it's so many years ago now, I can't really remember the, the problems. You tend, you, you tend to forget about the, the bad times and remember the good times. The music that he supplied, because they pre-recorded what the most of the music is singing, he, he was like a half tone out of uh, out of pitch. <laughs> and so when we got into so when the, the music, which was recorded separately, and then we tried to meld the two together, uh, it didn't work. So we had to take the, his vocals to a thing called a harmonizer that they had at MGM, and, and tweak the uh, the pitch, which they could do without losing any speed. Uh, and we finally figured, figured it out. It's, it's not a very memorable score. Glycooxatonic phosphate is the latest scoop, but that's all right, girls, you can call it goo. Hey, 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 hey. Elvis, halfway through the shoot, got married. I didn't know if there was a difference between his takes from before he got married and after. I probably <laughs> might be a little tuckered. I, I didn't remember that. Mm. Yeah. I remember we had an enormous... We had a rap party that just happened to coincide exactly with the uh, director's birthday. So we had a cake that was uh, you know, maybe a, a yard square. Had been all, the, all of the uh, icing uh, was uh, all, pictured all the, the highlight moments of the film, you know, the, uh, the big race and the, uh, the uh, yeah, this and that. It was all little pictures with the, the icing. Towards the end of the evening when everybody had a little, little uh, juice, uh, Elvis and his buddies came over and stood by the table where the, the cake was, and the director was sitting there with his wife and his 12-year-old daughter. So Elvis said, you know, Arthur, this has been the greatest uh, experience of my life. We've had more fun on this movie, and I can't tell you how grateful I am, and we've all had that, 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 and I could just see Arthur Nadell's face just, just, you know, bursting forth. And as he was talking, the other three guys got up and they got a corner of the cake, and as Elvis got to the end of his speech, they all just picked it up and put it on the, you know, dumped it on the director's head. The daughter didn't think it was very funny. Everybody else thought it was funny. The daughter got outraged. She grabbed a piece of cake and threw it at Elvis. Uh, somebody else grabbed a piece of cake and threw it at so-and-so, and then the next thing you know, it was a, the biggest food fight. It was a yard square cake just being, you know. So I do remember putting the same sport coat on maybe three or four weeks later. And... Uh, going somewhere and digging in the pocket and finding some, some cake. <laughs> he was such a you know, free spirit at that point. It was long before he had any problems in, in terms of his, his health or his weight or anything like that. He was still a young guy and, uh, and uh, having a great time. I, I didn't think it, he didn't take it very seriously at this, at this point. And uh, at this party that I mentioned, everybody thought that he would get up and sing and, we, and he was agreeable to, uh, to it himself. But the, the colonel put it kibosh on that because he thought that somebody might have a tape recorder or something and might 
you know, try to exploit the uh, the fact that they had a tape with Elvis. So he was he was a pretty loose guy. What was Colonel Tom Parker like on the set? He, he never showed up on the set either. You know, he, he was just a, this, this hovering presence, just the, the aura of the the colonel. And of course, he had everything to say about any kind of contractual obligations or any remuneration or anything. He, he was right on top of Elvis on that one. No, I never saw. I never, never met him. I think you're one of the few people to go from working in an Elvis movie to winning an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just old. I've just been around doing it a long time. Okay. Did you Did you think of Elvis when you when you accepted? Oh, hardly. Uh, did you expect to work on any other Elvis films after you finished this one, or were you just? Uh, hey, if they'd have paid the money, you know. <laughs> Clambake, 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 clambake